Okay, that last lesson might have seemed a little bit long, but that's because it was the first look we had at object properties. As we move along, we'll be able to pick up a little bit of speed as we gain some traction with our knowledge, because a lot of the stuff is applicable to all the objects. For example, if you know how to name one object, you can name any of the objects, because the naming convention is the same, and so forth. So, in this particular tutorial, we're going to look at the button actions. So, it's the same thing. In the beginning here, we're going to take a, li a little bit of a more close-up look, and as we move along, we'll be able to get some speed going as we gain some traction. So, let's go ahead and double-click on our page, and then we'll click the Add Action button. So, make sure that you're in the Actions tab here, and then click Add Action. And we're just looking at the actions here. In the next video, we'll take a look at some examples. But for this one, we just want to actually do an overview. So, from the Choose a Category pull-down, Choose Button. Okay? And you see here that there's a family of actions that are specifically designed for the button object. Now, these are a lot less complicated than they look. There's not actually, uh, a, or put it this way, there's a better way to look at this than to look at them as, as individual actions. Look at them as pairs of actions because basically that's how they work. So, for example, our first action here is button get position. And this gets the position of the button and returns it to us so we can tell where our button is. Now, it has a corresponding action down here called set position which means we can set the position of our button. Therefore, we can move buttons at runtime, animate them, and do a variety of things like that. Again, you'll notice that the next one comes in a pair too. So we've got button, get size, and that tells us how big our button is. For example, 200 by 100 pixels. And additionally, it's got a corresponding action down here called button set size, where we can actually set the size of a button dynamically. For example, 200 by 100 pixels. So once you, you begin to look at this as uh, six actions with corresponding actions as opposed to a dozen actions, it sort of simplifies the way that you can view it. Okay, so let's look at the next one. That would be button get state. And this will tell you the up-down state of a button object, not the enabled or disabled state. And you can uh, set the state using the button set state action, so they correspond. Now the next action is the button get text action and this gets the caption text from a button and returns it to us at runtime so we can basically using our scripts detect what a button says and this is very very handy when using conjunction with its uh, corresponding action here the button set text action so we can basically get and set text for buttons at runtime now this is a really great thing I mean for example if you're doing dynamic uh, scripting shopping carts database uh, based things whatnot. You can basically use one button style and apply any set of information to it at runtime. Okay? So for example in a shopping cart you might have a page that is one central layout to display your items and you can just display the item title on the button as you as you go along. And when you change items you just change that text using a button set text action. Okay? So uh, we'll look at that one specifically in the examples video next but let's just take a look at the last two here and that would be the button is enabled and button set enabled pair okay so we can check to see if our button is enabled and we can also set whether it's enabled or not and the final pair is the button is visible and button set visible pair okay so we can check to see if our button is visible and we can set its visibility to true or false using this action so as I had mentioned earlier it's very easy to uh, enable a button or disable a button using a single tiny action here just by using a true or false now a couple other things here you'll notice as we go down through the actions down here in the bottom you get a little description of the action right so for example if we click on set state it tells you it sets the up down state of a button object now if we were to select an action from the top for example set text and click on this little blue link down at the bottom here it'll actually take us to its entry in the help file and this is really handy um, if we take a look through here you'll notice that there is a whole um, chart which will tell you whether or not this is compatible with standard or pro version and additionally when you click on these it'll actually take you to a little area that will describe the action to you and it'll explain it it'll tell you the parameters for example what it takes and what it returns and as well it'll give you an example or two under the examples tab so that's very very handy for example here they've set up an example here that changes the text on a button named button one to click here okay using a set text action so we'll go ahead and move on to our examples and we'll use examples exactly like this but suffice to say that it's a, a handy way to find out information on a given action 
as we move along just by clicking on this little link in the bottom. And of course, additionally, you can always join us in the forum anytime you have any questions related to any of these things, and we're happy to answer them. So let's go ahead and move on to some examples of the button actions, and I think that's going to clear up a lot for everybody.